Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Air mobility operations in the military are complex and require high levels of planning and coordination. This is especially true when challenging factors such as bad weather or rough terrain exist. This is why these missions are coordinated and executed by an Air Mobility Liaison Officer. His role is to provide a communication link between the ground forces and the airlift, including transport aircraft, helicopters, and aerial refueling planes. An AMLO needs to work closely with ground commanders so they can understand the logistics behind the troop movements and their operations. Equally, they have the knowledge of airlift capabilities and supply drops. That's why this position is usually filled by pilots and navigators trained in airlift movements. However, they got further training focused on the principles and guidelines of air mobility and radio communications. This training goes more in depth by preparing the officials with rehearsal exercises on airlift systems like the intra-theater airlift request system and single mobility systems. Thanks to their job, the effectiveness and efficiency of supply drops and ground forces movements are greatly improved. This work can get really demanding when conditions are harsh, such as in a desert area. Usually, the officer and their team in the Air Mobility Command do a recon of the terrain and assess a potential landing site. To do this, the team takes into account factors like the surface conditions, looks for any kind of obstructions, and identifies features in the terrain that can be used as orientation points. As safety measurements, several tools are used to check the terrain conditions and guarantee that the runway can accommodate big aircraft like a C-17 during takeoff or landing. With a probe called a soil penetrometer, the airmen can determine if the soil is stable enough to bear the load of the plane. Once the location has been established, the Special Operations Airmen mark the boundaries of the landing strip using visual markers such as cones, flags, or painted lines. This process is usually carried out using dirt bikes, considering that they must travel long distances quickly to place these marks. Their agility makes them valuable in reconnaissance and surface preparation tasks, ensuring that the landing strip is ready to support military airlift in such environments. Even when the conditions of the terrain are not as difficult and harsh as an arid area, landing in grass requires the same dedication and planning. For grass landings, a contingency response group is in charge of establishing the landing areas from scratch. Following procedures similar to those of other types of terrain, the airfield management locates an optimal place and marks it to provide guidance to the pilots. An example is seen with the landing of tactical transport aircraft like the C-130 and C-146.
These planes are capable of operating in austere or improvised landing strips. These capabilities that certain airplanes have to be able to land in adverse conditions are given due to the design of the airplane, but also to the accessories that are installed on the aircraft. A C-130 Hercules is used for missions in the Arctic, with no necessary infrastructure to land. To facilitate landings in snow, the aircraft is equipped with skis instead of traditional landing gear. This equipment is attached in front of the plane wheels and helps to distribute the weight over a larger surface area. They work well in deep, freshly fallen snow and prevent the aircraft from sinking into the snow. Dedicated groups like the Airlift Wings Polar Camp Skiway Team are responsible for maintaining this equipment and installing it into the plane. With highly trained personnel, the Skiway Team is also in charge of preparing the snow runways for planes like the C-130. During such cold and extreme conditions, groups like the Skiway Team operate out of air bases that must endure snowy conditions. The personnel are always ready with equipment like snow plows, snow blowers or de-icing trucks to keep the runways clear to take off or land. It shows how even in such a risky environment, there is a necessity to keep the operations of the aircraft. Whether for rescue and emergency missions, military operations, scientific research, or to transport supplies, it is critical to provide those essential services and offer support in all conditions. This support is vital for areas like the Arctic that depend entirely on supplies delivered by air. Thanks to their polar equipment, the adapted LC-130 is the backbone of the supply runs done to the Arctic bases. Inspections are done on this equipment before it is taken off to the north to ensure the aircraft is ready for the mission. Check the bottom strobe. This process is done at the same time as checking the meteorological conditions of the destination, ensuring that there won't be any snowstorms or other events. While the plane is in flight, the destination prepares the landing area to ensure the cargo arrives in perfect condition. With these types of runways in austere locations, extra precautions must be taken during takeoff and landing operations. Pilots must ensure with the ground teams that they have cleared any obstacles during the approach and landing. Even so, they must determine the safest approach to the area and calculate the appropriate angle of descent. Those calculations are based on aircraft weight, runway length, elevation, temperature, and wind conditions. Pilots might even use techniques like short field or soft field landing procedures to optimize their navigation through the runways.
However, not all unconventional landings and takeoffs occur in inhospitable terrain far from civilization. Given the situation, highways and roads can be used as emergency runways. These roads can provide a viable option for pilots to conduct vital operations when traditional airports are not nearby. In these types of situations, training exercises are carried out to familiarize pilots with these events. Thanks to briefings and mission planning, the crew is prepared before entering their aircraft. allowing them to know the correct setup to operate. This has been seen in exercises like Northern Strike, where highway landings were tested with an A-10 Thunderbolt. Those training sessions for austere landings in the A-10 Thunderbolt II prepares the pilots for landing on various types of runway conditions. During these exercises, several techniques are learned and knowledge about the tools used to prepare improvised runways is acquired. Their instructors provide feedback to help them improve their skills and decision-making abilities in those situations. By improving skills and knowledge about aircraft capabilities during these training exercises, new methods and technology can be developed to further improve such features. Sessions like the Obsidian Iceberg exercise focus on developing and validating techniques and procedures for nodal amphibious operations. Here, new systems are tested for takeoff and landing conditions in remote locations. This is the case with the fifth generation fighter F-35B and its STOVL system. That refers to the short takeoff and vertical landing capabilities of this F-35 variant. It allows the aircraft to land or take off from a short runway, even take off vertically if there is no payload, eliminating the need for traditional runways. The development of this technology has allowed the opportunity to implement more flexible tactics and methods during military operations. This includes the execution of missions from small, unprepared landing sites, such as helipads, short roadways, or amphibious assault ships. Pilots of the F-35B must carry through the training exercises and simulations to understand these newer systems. With such knowledge, they are capable of employing different procedures to manage those short field or rough field landings and optimize aircraft performance in challenging conditions. This ability to execute landings in harsh environments is of vital importance for military operations, humanitarian assistance, and emergency response efforts. Pilots can fulfill their mission objectives by preparing the pilots with the skills, knowledge, and resources to do these landings. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.